Roscana, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Hello, Virginia. Paul. Well, your initial response. Just take us through your response to to what the what the uh, the meeting did decide and what it didn't. Yes. Uh, uh, for, for a long time it's been clear there wasn't going to be a binding agreement for, from uh, Copenhagen. Uh, uh, expectations were overblown and so it's not the slightest bit surprising there wasn't a binding agreement with numbers. The groundwork hadn't been done. Uh, no one had tried to do the groundwork on the basic numbers. Uh, President Obama uh, had made it clear that uh, uh, his timetable uh, wasn't working towards a very strong outcome in uh, Copenhagen. So uh, it's not appropriate to be greatly disappoint disappointed because there wasn't going to be a strong outcome from Copenhagen. But uh, when you analyse what has come out, uh, there are some steps forward. I think the discussions between Obama and the four large developing country emitters, China, India, Brazil and South Africa will turn out to have been of historic importance. The, the great weakness of the uh, Kyoto Protocol and the discussions in Bali uh, was that the developing countries which are now contributing most of the growth in emissions uh, weren't expected to uh, enter strong commitments. Well, that was always going to be difficult mm. to change, and that now has changed. The expectation there has changed. and uh, but, it's, but it's just an expectation. I mean, th th there's nothing they're actually formally required to do. Well, China has put some very strong things on the table, and it's actually doing them. Uh, unlike other countries, it's already started. The last two years has been a big change in trajectory mm. in emissions in China. Now, what China's failed to do so far is... Uh, be prepared to uh, enter an internationally binding commitment and that, that'll be part of the agenda of the next few years. Another development uh, at uh, Copenhagen was the, uh, uh, the, the, the commitment to uh, what is called a, a maximum of two degrees warming. Well, you can't be as precise as that. The science isn't as precise as that. But, be hard uh, to measure, wouldn't it? Uh, but, uh, <laughs> Uh, it's it's the equivalent of what, what in the Australian discussion we've talked about as the 450 parts per million uh, uh, outcome. And that's sitting there as an objective with a review in 2015. Well, that's a review in Obama's second term uh, when if things go well for him, he'll be in a stronger position to do things. So so uh, that's a time when, uh, uh, when you can turn... Uh, uh, th these uh, loose commitments into something stronger. So what can the general public, um, who, who doesn't know about the exact science, what can uh, they make of the the, the two degrees? Uh, it was, do you believe it's to, just a token uh, or something to have um, while they all fly home? Oh, I think it's uh, uh, it, it, it's significant that uh, uh, there's an agreement of uh, all of the major countries. Uh, on, on that objective. We haven't had an objective like that before. Uh, it's a much stronger objective, for example, than uh, had been articulated by the Stern Review, mm -hmm. uh, which was really aiming at three degrees uh, with the 550 parts per million. Uh, so it, that, that's a big step. Now, it sits there without a mechanism for implementation. We'll learn more over the months ahead uh, when we see how countries uh, turn those uh, general statements uh, over the weekend into, uh, uh, in, into uh, particular statements in the annexes, but uh, uh, we, we, will, we'll, we will only learn uh, gradually what it means. But at least there's a commitment that people will keep going back to, and I think the combination of that and the 2015 uh, review might turn out to be important. Uh, so so we, can live, we can live without the mandated binding cuts as long as we what, rely on, on the goodwill and the faith of all countries to come to their own arrangements about that? Oh, it would have been better to have uh, a, a binding agreement, but, but it's a long time since it was the slightest bit possible. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes I, I pick up your, your very realistic view on that. Yeah. Well, well, we're looking at things realistically then. Would the situation have been different in Copenhagen? Uh, would this have in any way contributed towards a, a different mindset at that place if Australia had gone there with an emissions trading scheme in place? Well, Australia is just one uh, country of modest scale. Uh, I think our Prime Minister played a, a positive role. I've been very critical of the government on some things mm. over the last couple of years on these issues, but uh, I'm not critical at all of the role he played 
in the lead up to this meeting. I think the outcome uh, would have been worse uh, w without him uh, uh, being very active in his role as a friend of the of the chair. But, but his uh, role is different to to the, to the existence of a of, of a you know legislator in emissions trading scheme yeah. here in Australia. Would, would would that have been significant? Oh, I think it would have uh, strengthened his position, but uh, our position was never going to be decisive. We're, we're, we're one country. It would have helped, but uh, would not have been decisive.